Inheritance is one of the four fundamental concepts of object-oriented programming. In this video I'm going to show you how to implement inheritance in VB.NET. If you've already written a class with various methods and properties and now you want to write another similar class with the same methods and properties as a starting point, you can do so very quickly indeed. One class can inherit all of the methods and properties of another with one simple command. Arguably you could just copy and paste the code from one class to another, but inheritance gives you so much more than that. Any changes made to the parent class will be instantly passed on to the inheriting class. I'm going to write an employee class. Objects created from this class will encapsulate the properties and methods of people who work at my imaginary cattery. Before we begin, remember I've already got a person class with first name, last name and date of birth properties. There's also a save details method, in fact I've got several overloads of it. And I've got a customised constructor and I've overloaded this as well. Let's remind ourselves of the front end. I can create a new person object and I can set various properties and call the methods. That'll do for now. Let's write an employee class. I'm writing the code inside the same class library project as the person class, so my employee class will also be compiled into personnel.dll. An employee is a type of person with a first name, a last name, a date of birth, etc. So I'm going to inherit all of the properties and methods from person just like this. Now I'm going to build the library and let's see what we can do at the front end now. Notice I used emp instead of e because the button procedure is already being passed a parameter called e as event arguments. my employee now has all of the properties and methods of a person. Now I'm going to extend my employee class. I'm going to add some methods and properties which are specific to an employee. Let's say job role and salary. Let's rebuild the class library and take a look at the front end again. My employee has two extra properties now. Now I should say it's still possible to create a person object directly from the person class and it will have its own original interface. But you can see here that the employee has inherited all of the characteristics of the person and then it's gone on and extended them with some of its own. Now, suppose I want to code up another class which is a type of employee. I can do that too. Perhaps, for example, I have casual and permanent employees who are different enough to warrant separate classes. It couldn't be simpler. I write my new casual employee class like this. And I can inherit from employee with one command like this. And now I can extend the casual employee class. Perhaps I'll add a property called agency contact. That is the name of the agency that sent this employee to the cattery in the first place. A bit of copying and pasting for speed here. And we'll rebuild the library and try this one. And there we have it, a casual employee who has all of the methods and properties of an employee 
who has all of the methods and properties of a person. We have a chain of inheritance here. Now let me reiterate this. The real power of inheritance. Suppose I change the code in my person class, perhaps by adding another property like middle name or nationality. Or maybe I change the way that date of birth is validated, or the way one of the methods has been implemented. Any changes will be instantly passed on to any classes that inherit from person. In this case, employee. Indeed, those changes will be passed all the way down the chain of inheritance. This is a good time for some terminology. When one class inherits from another, the parent class, that is, the one being inherited from, is known as a superclass. The child class, that is, the class doing the inheriting, is known as a subclass or a derived class. So here, person is a superclass of employee. And employee is a subclass or a derived class of person. Employee is a superclass of casual employee. Casual employee is a subclass or a derived class of employee. Person is at the very start of the inheritance hierarchy. Person is therefore referred to as the base class. I should say that although I've written these three classes inside the same class library, namely personnel.dll, there's nothing to stop you from starting a new project for each class and writing it inside a different class library altogether. All you need to do is import the appropriate library and you can inherit from a class within. Indeed, a chain of inheritance can span multiple files if that's the way you want to organise your code. In my case, these three classes are all to do with people, so my structure is logical and easy to maintain. Next time, I'll show you how a class can override a property or a method that it's inherited. This means that different classes within the inheritance hierarchy can implement the same properties and methods in different ways. We call this polymorphism. I'll also show you how to code up a base class that can't be instantiated. For example, you wouldn't be able to create a person object. A base class that exists only so that other classes can or must inherit from it is known as an abstract base class.